Earlier this year, two massive earthquakes flattened parts of Turkey and Syria. The impact was devastating. And true to form, South Africa's gift of the givers sprang into action, dispatching rescue personnel and crucial medical supplies, food and blankets to the worst hit areas. It was the latest humanitarian intervention in a catalogue of natural and man-made disasters stretching back decades. The reason gift of the givers is viewed with such pride by South Africans. And in a country desperate for heroes and good news stories, this celebrated foundation provides both. Guest presenter Lorenza Eckhart sat down with their founder, Dr. Intia Suleiman. It's just after seven o'clock in the morning and the school run is in full swing. Rahma is among the sea of children walking to school. As so many times before, her dad walks alongside her to the classroom. Seven-year-old Rahma is completely unaware that disaster follows his every step. The area is one of the worst hit by Monday's earthquake that started to distribute relief for relief workers from gift of the gift Most of the injuries that we're seeing is traumatic. In my time working as a journalist in South Africa, I've seen the very worst and the very best of us. But few people embody the spirit of this country like the man I set out to meet today. And you'll find him right here in this industrial part of Peter Maritzburg. Hi, Renzo. Welcome to Gift of the Gears. Very good having you here. Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman is a South African humanitarian who founded the Gift of the Givers Foundation in 1992. He gave up his successful medical practice to follow a calling, resulting in this, the largest disaster response organization of African origin, providing emergency relief and aid to people affected by natural disasters, wars and other crises in over 40 countries. Much of the relief aid is sent from this warehouse. I never expected it to be so big. You know, when you think of a small Muslim group in South Africa, how big are you going to be? You don't have that kind of big money, where everybody from all races and all religions will participate, where you have mixed teams going all across the world. How big is the organization today? 107 full-time people in South Africa, probably 500 staff around the world. Gift of the Givers wasn't my idea. It's totally spiritual. I met a spiritual teacher in Turkey in 1992. The spiritual teacher just picks up his head, makes eye contact with me, and looks heavenwards. I'm in fluent Turkish, and I don't speak a word of Turkish. He said, my son, I'm not asking you, I'm instructing you to form an organization. The name is, in Arabic will be Wakful Wakifin, gift of the givers. You will serve people of all races, all religions, all colors, all classes, all cultures. You will expect nothing in return, not even a thank you. This is an instruction for you for the rest of your life. Whatever you do is done through you and not by you. After all these years, Dr. Suleiman continues to answer the call to help those in need. The Gift of the Givers is involved in a wide variety of initiatives, from improving hospitals and schools to providing free mental health care. They rely entirely on donations in cash or in kind. Many years ago, this house was the headquarters of the Gift of the Givers. Today, it's a refuge for people in the community in need of counselling and psychological support. Hello. Heading up this program is Gift of the Givers co-founder and Dr. Suleiman's wife, Zora Suleiman. They went any psychological support services for the Indian Muslim community. And so that is why I decided, OK, let's start off this Gift of the Givers care line counselling service. As much as I thought this was only for the Muslim and the Indian community, it opened up to everybody. And we also work in schools where we do lots of life skills and we do topics like anti-bullying, anger management, substance abuse. Support from Gift of the Givers is so immense. We will really struggle to allow our children to reach this standard that they are without their support. What was once a bare, lifeless classroom 
now bloomed with vibrant colors offering a lifeline to the less fortunate children who would have otherwise been deprived of such opportunities. This remarkable transformation owes much to Principal Supersad's unwavering commitment to the school. He reached out to Dr. Suleiman for assistance. Children who are dyslexic have autism. For whatever reason, they seem to be children of a lesser god, and support is missing. But when Doc and the foundation came along, they saw this need for us to really support the vulnerable children. They come in with that compassion, that love. He's such an optimistic person. Where I would be struggling to find a way, he just brings this optimism and gives it to us and says, here's the way for you. It's all things that are doable. And you're making a difference to somebody's life. You can't make a difference to 65 million people's lives, but you can make a difference to one life. And every day you add a few more lives. And that's what we believe in doing. When you help the people, you sort of feel this, this peace. When you see a smile on a person's face or a child being happy with something, something happens in your soul. You can't, I can't explain it. I find peace in my prayer. I find peace in my spiritual feelings. Every time I need some arrangement or some network, it comes right in front of me. I need people, they call me. If I need something, I get to know about it. If something's about to happen, I make that connection three weeks before it happens. It all comes at the right time, in the right place. It's just placed in front of you. There's no doubt in 30 years that everything about this is spiritual. Dr. Imtia Suleiman's selfless dedication over the last three decades has saved millions of people, yet it has taken a profound toll on his own life. The spiritual teacher told me specifically that when you do this job, you're going to divide your life into three parts. One part for yourself, one part for your family, and one part for what you're going to do. I could never follow that formula. Everything went, because I basically destroyed the family. And that's the only regret that I have in my life. That I've, I've lost out on my children. In those years, which were the early years of my children, Imtiaz was away a lot of the time overseas for long and extended periods. I looked at myself as the one stable anchor in my children's life. Because Imtiaz was traveling so extensively, they need a semblance of a solid family. I wasn't going to compromise that at any cost. God has steered our paths in our life, but we've accepted that this is our life. And with it comes a lot of sacrifices. And then you met your second wife. Yeah, I met her after the earthquake in Pakistan in 2005. And then in 2007, December, we got married. I think the greatest joy is when I see my family happy. In fact, the kids laugh at me. They said, when I tell a joke, it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then they start laughing. So I said, if my joke is not funny, why are you laughing? <laughs> it's more about happiness and to watch the children grow, the grandchildren grow, to see their happiness, to see their progress, to see their development, and how they can attach to you and the grandchildren come to want to be only with you. See you later. I can't tell you, I can't tell you. See you, love you. See you, love you. How do you control your emotions when you go on these responses and you meet these communities um, and you see the sadness in the world. God has given me a special gift. It doesn't move me. I don't get attached to any situation. And I tell my teams before they leave, I said, feel for the situation. Don't feel for the individual. Given what Dr. Suleiman has seen, he remains optimistic about South Africa's future. I'm a disaster tourist. I don't visit countries in good times. I go in the worst of times, and I've seen real havoc. We're nowhere near that. After having spent some time with Dr. Imtia Suleiman, I've learned that it really doesn't take much to make a difference. We just need to look around us and start somewhere. As long as we participate in the life of our own lives within the country, we will fix the system. And you can see it already. 
people are saying, we'll fix the oceans, we'll fix the potholes, we'll cut the budgets on the side. We do have problems, not something that we can't fix. And the most important thing is active citizenry. The country does not belong to the government. Let's go back to 27 April 1994. It is the single greatest event in our country, not because of black government to replace the white government. We were told, fill your houses with food. Nothing happened. Everybody was calm, peaceful, voted. But in nothing that happened, actually everything happened. They said in the action, we're going to rebuild this country. If you haven't learned from that, sorry, we haven't learned anything. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access carte blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.